Hello, welcome to this new video uh, in which I am going to be painting some of the original Men in Black, uh, these Brunswickers here. Uh, this is off the back of a Twitter uh, feed. The guy who goes by the name of uh, Stephen, he's also known as the Old Wargamer, an Australian, uh, has challenged Twitter Wargamers to paint Brunswickers between September and October. So I thought not only would I paint some, I'd make a video about it. And because I've already got a load of Brunswicks uh, in 6mm for my uh, Waterloo, 6mm uh, Waterloo collection, I didn't think I'd really want to paint anymore. However, I'd have thought about it and I've actually come up with uh, painting 15mm versions of the uh, Duke of Brunswick himself, who was wounded and died at the Battle of Quattro Bra in 1815. Uh, I got these from uh, Eureka. Uh, they came very quickly actually, really, really nice, good price as well, and they're beautiful models. They're more like 18 mil than 15. Uh, but I also got a couple of extra uh, uh, generals as well to make this into a little diorama rather than because I don't have any other 15 mil Napoleonic figures. So, enough waffle from me, let's crack on with the painting. Well, the first thing to do was just to clean the models up. Uh, this was pretty easy. They, they're very clean anyway. Uh, it's just the bases. Just needed sanding down just to flatten them off and things. And a few little bits of flash cutting off here and there. Uh, as I say, these are really nice models anyway from uh, AB or Eureka. I'm never sure which what the name is, but they uh, really nicely moulded, really clean and sharp and loads and loads of detail on them for 15 mil I know they're kind of 18 mil but really tons of detail on these uh, if I was able to do 15 mil Napoleonics I'd certainly do it with these and then because they're the men in black uh, I black undercoated them because this was just going to speed everything up really simple just give it a good spray with some black primer uh, all four of the figures done all at once and make sure you get as much coverage as possible on those and then just leave them to dry then once they were dry uh, I went over and started painting them because they're almost halfway done anyway because they're black so we started with the flesh tones I use Vallejo's tan yellow instead of um, their sunny skin tone because I think the tan yellow just looks better as a flesh tone than the uh, the ones that they sell as flesh tones or Caucasian flesh anyway uh, that was a pretty simple thing to do and then the next large uh, part was to paint the horses and these were all painted in beige brown Vallejo as well um, wasn't particularly uh, bothered about being too sharp and on the detail here because I was going to go back anyway and clean up some of these lines but made sure that I got good coverage over all the horses all four of them here very simple uh, I wanted them all as bay horses just to give them a bit of colour uh, compared to the black of the uniforms of the uh, the figures themselves so that was a quite an easy job and again ensuring that you just get all the coverage even underneath the horses as well and uh, like I said don't worry too much about hitting anything uh, any other details because we're going to go back anyway and uh, paint things in with black and that's exactly what I'm doing here so taking a smaller brush I uh, just went over all the black all the uh, the reins uh, around the edges of the saddles and things just uh, legs stuff that I'd hit with the brown just to clean things up a little bit uh, it just makes it easier to go back over these things than it does in the first place you know trying to get uh, cut in around the detail and you can see as well on my phone there I was using uh, the Saint Jours uh, website which is uh, some guy has basically gone through every single uniform that was used in the 100 days campaign of 1815 so I just downloaded some photos there of the Duke of Brunswick himself and his staff and used that as my guide for painting these figures because I wasn't entirely sure what uh, what uniforms they were wearing anyway. But this took a little bit of time just to uh, get those black details back on again. This is just flat black by Vallejo. But once it was done, it was done. You don't have to go back over it again, just doing all the, the straps and everything, just doing all those in black. You're probably doing it in different colours if you wanted to, but I thought I'm going to make it easy on myself and do everything in black. So there's the last one. I think that's Duke himself. Uh, he was a one-piece figure. The other ones were uh, two-piece figures, but I actually glued them on the horses before I painted them. Some people don't. In this case, there wasn't much point. I, just, I thought I'll, I'll do them all as one. 
and then I moved on to the uh, the collars and the cuffs of each of the figures here and also hat bands and things this is a light blue this was uh, part of their uniform as mentioned on that St. Jours uh, website these have all got uh, collars and cuffs of a light blue and I think even their guns uh, their artillery were painted in this as well so it seems to be some kind of uh, typical colour for the Brunswick's at least in 1815 and that's when these are supposed to be from so this was using a tiny brush and just ensuring that you hit all those again I wouldn't be too worried about being very neat at this point because you can always go back with a black and just line anything that you need to uh, I'm just trying to get the, the basic colours on at this point really everything can be neatened up so I wouldn't worry too much about it and then we were on to silver. This is a very old pot of mithril silver by Citadel Colours. You can tell by the shape of the uh, the pot itself. Uh, probably archaeological at this point. But these, uh, the silver was basically the edge of the saddles and uh, all their, uh, their blankets and things and some of the little details here and there, at least according to the website I was using. It was either this or gold, but I kind of like the, the silver against black more so than gold. So I just used, I use this. I don't know how how exact it is. Uh, I think it's hypothetical on the on the website that I was using as the uh, as a as a source. Um, you know, if I'm wrong, tell me in the comments. Not that I'm that fussed anyway. <laughs> uh, but here we have uh, gold. This is gold. So I was painting. Uh, this is for the uh, sabers and just little bits and pieces as well, like the. Uh, the Shaco, uh, what do you call them, chin straps, they were in gold as well. So just painting all tiny little bits and pieces using a very small brush. Then came back with white. I painted the socks and the faces of the horses as well, as well as the gloves of uh, all the, the, uh, the officers because they would have all been wearing gloves rather than having uh, bare hands. So I painted all their hands and then I went round and did the horses as well just to give them a little bit of a uh, little difference here and there. And as I say I then went back really with black just to cut in all the parts that I'd missed previously just using a small brush to ensure that everything was covered that was needed to be and also any mistakes that I'd already made previously uh, were also covered up as well because there's quite a few fine lines here and there in some of these uniforms. So this was just a case of really, you know, it feels strange to go back and repaint a paint, but sometimes you're going to need to uh, in these cases. And because these these figures are mostly in black, uh, it makes it a lot easier just to use the, the black to do it. So including the reins and things like that, because I'd obviously missed stuff or on the on the manes of the horses as well. And then I painted the horses' hooves. I wasn't really sure what colour to paint these. I did them in khaki because I looked at a few photos online of bay horses and they, they seem to have very different kinds of hooves. Uh, you can paint them any colour you want. So I just went with khaki just, again, to give them a little bit of pop at the bottom of their, their feet. You'll probably not even see this anyway when I put the static grass on later, but I just thought I'll do it just to, to ensure it's there and I'm not just painting them in black. Then I painted the base. This is Burnt Umber. A really dark brown. I actually probably didn't need to do this but I wanted to uh, paint the brown on for later for the basing just so that I knew that the base was actually covered and you wouldn't be able to see the black uh, because I use a basing material later on but uh, I wanted to ensure that as I say these these bases were completely covered and you wouldn't be able to see any any mistakes through the static grass that I put on later. And this was quite an easy little thing. I also painted the, the base I was going to use as well, which was a Flames of War large size base. Uh, I painted that off camera, you'll see it later on. But uh, yeah, I just got those done. And then the next thing was just to ink wash them. And then we're using my favourite ink wash, Agrax Earthshade. Uh, this is a lovely wash from Games Workshop. Literally, uh, just pile this all over the figures. Uh, you can just slop it on uh, as long as it doesn't get caught up in any of the gaps in the legs or anything like that I'll just give it a blow so uh, you break any bubbles or anything that form on it but this is a lovely ink it's it's really really nice it doesn't take long to dry especially with a hair dryer as well if you use that on it but I left it for a few hours and then went back 
and I started highlighting. With the horses, I painted uh, beige brown again over some of the, the raised areas. And that's just what I'm doing here, just uh, to define some muscles and also just to give them a slight highlight as well here and there. Uh, with, uh, with them being 15 mil, I didn't go particularly mad on the highlighting of the horses, but just some of the larger parts like the flanks and things. And then went back again with a mix of khaki and beige brown, again just to lighten things up and just to add a further dimension of uh, blending on the on the horses as well. I could have taken a lot longer on this and probably done it with a wet palette or something, but I've never really used one. I keep meaning to, to try it out. And then also for the highlighting, I went back, did the blue, because some of that had gotten a bit dark under the agrax. So I was basically just uh, tightening that up as well, just to make some of these colours pop. You'd, you don't have to do every single bit of it, just ensure that some of it is done. And then the same with doing the faces as well, went back with those because people are drawn immediately to human faces. So uh, making those stand out on your figures is probably one of the probably one of the best things you can do I think and then I painted in a few highlights on the black now how do you highlight black well mix it with khaki don't mix it with grey because grey is far too stark I find uh, khaki is a little bit of a warmer colour so it gives a little bit of a better blend between the black and the highlight you can't really see it but you can if you look hard enough and it's just enough to pick out just bits and pieces on them like uh, you know some of the larger parts of their, their arms and their shoulders and then I went back again, uh, further highlights on the silver. So just going back over the silver that I painted previously. You don't have to do the full areas, just some of the raised areas, and just to really bring out some of those the bits that may have got lost under the the wash. It just adds you that that third layer on top of everything else, and just you know painting in buttons and things and various bits of uniform and that kind of stuff, and the little uh, uh, monograms on there. Uh, on their, their, their scabbards and uh, what have you. So that was quite an easy little job as well, using a tiny brush. And then finally just went back with the white. I didn't bother repainting the white on the horses, but I painted the white on the figures. I thought the white on the horses looks natural enough uh, when it's darker, but I wanted their gloves and things again to stand out against that black. Because you're working with black, it's pretty hard. Uh, so any highlights work and then I sprayed them this is Windsor and Newton uh, professional artists matte spray the best stuff on the uh, on the planet as far as I'm concerned uh, left them to dry it didn't take long overnight and then it was finally just as I say I, I got a flames of war large large size base painted that in the same brown as the the base of the figures uh, set them up initially dry just to see how I wanted them to, to be and then glued them all into place dead simple uh, I wanted it to look a little bit like a staff conference going on and somebody arriving telling the Duke that something was happening the next thing to do was to texture the base as I say I didn't really need to paint the base of the horses but I wanted to just in case some of this stuff didn't get through and it would look a bit weird having black spots this is a uh, base texture by um, Vallejo it's their earth colour. It's uh, put on with a brush and it has very fine sand in it and it's quite a thick paste so it looks quite nice. Uh, it's a, I was going to ink wash this but I actually forgot to do it. Not that it matters because I uh, put static grass over the top of it anyway so it kind of blended it in anyway. It doesn't really matter but uh, you can ink wash it if you want to just to darken that mud down a little bit because it is quite bright but... Uh, I didn't bother and there's no difference so this is where this is the static grass application of uh, just painting PVA glue on not watered down or anything uh, literally just daubing that over making sure that it goes all the way up to the hooves and over covers every bit of it sometimes quite hard to see because it is see-through so you know make sure you've covered the entire base in this then dip it in the static grass and that was it I gave this a, uh, a hair dryer treatment so give it a good blow with the hairdryer, that makes some of the static grass uh, stand up as well. You don't need the applicator if you're doing things like this. And final thing to do was just to add some grass tufts. I've got these from eBay. Uh, I think it's from uh, War Painter, I can't be sure, I can't remember. Uh, but they you can get them everywhere and anywhere. Put some of these different uh, static grass tufts on and then also added some uh, 
some of these flowers just to add a little, again a little splash of colour because there's a lot of black on that board. And that was it. That's the Duke and his staff uh, at Quatre Bras waiting for the French to do whatever it is the French do. So uh, they were completed. It took, a, it took me about a week or so uh, going back and forth with these and painting bits and pieces at a time. But I'm quite pleased with how they've turned out. And uh, I've posted them up on Twitter and they're obviously here on the video and also on my blog. So check them out there as well. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, I enjoy painting these and uh, stay tuned for more videos.